is in Abuja today in the name of meeting the ambassador, French ambassador to Nigeria. They continue to fail in every step they make. These idiotic, complete buffoons who parade themselves with their pot belly, smelling belly, calling themselves political elite from the southeast part of Biafra. They can't stop to amaze me. I told them, I will be their end. They didn't believe it. But I believe that today, by the virtue of the turn of prevent, they should be seeing the end to their criminality. They should be seeing the end to the oppression. They should be seeing the end to the slavery. And they should see the freedom of Biafra at the end. I also told them, I will be the equation they will never solve to Nigeria disintegration. This political juggernaut, this political criminals has been running from pillar to pole, looking for who to engage Simon Ekma. I told them, when they kidnapped Mazina and Bekanu two years, over two years ago, that they have done the worst mistake in Nigeria history. Because the kidnap of Mazin and Kano will facilitate Biafra freedom. Because that thing that Mazin and Kano cannot do, I am going to do it times 20. And I have not started. I want to give you people a gist this evening. Thereafter, these people know that what we are doing is right thing. They know that they have lost the faith. They know that the people no longer trust them. They know that every Biafra is hoping for a new nation and a new beginning. And that new hope lies on the Biafra Republic of Montenegro, of which Simon Ekpa myself is the Prime Minister. They have tried everything to blackmail me to the European Union. It is not working. Every time they make a move, it hit the brick wall. So today, they summoned the French ambassador to Nigeria. They told him, you need to help us and stop Simon Ekpa because you are from European Union. And the French ambassador was like very surprised. What the hell is going on here? Is that why you people invited me? They say yes. That, you know, this boy is doing this and doing that. You will explain and get tired of explaining. You will have to explain tired. No evidence. <laughs> He said, this boy is doing this and doing that. A French ambassador could not understand what the idiot we are talking about. He doesn't even understand why they are inviting him in the first place to talk about a Finnish citizen. But you know how stupid they are because we have given our voice to the African nation that have risen up against the oppressors in solidarity to Nigeria Republic, Burkina Faso, Mali. They see it as an avenue to invite French ambassador. <laughs> hey! Look at the kind of people that are called, uh, they calling themselves leaders. The one that they call Iwanyan Wu with his iPhone, she was there. Seated like a hippopotamus. looking for how to, whatever, to bring Simon Ekpa to whatever they are taking, their illusion. 
They persuaded the French ambassador. French ambassador was telling them, I don't understand why you people are inviting me here. I don't know what is going on. What is my business with EPA? What is my business with EPA? The French ambassador told them, pop and play. They should go and negotiate with someone EPA. <laughs> that one make the, that one that one close the chapter. French ambassador tell this umu oko oko, this political prostitution, political prostitute, political criminals who parade their pot belly in Abuja, all of them, right directly to their face, go and negotiate with someone Ekma. Someone Ekma have done nothing wrong. At the point, I was looking at them and watching them in the middle. <laughs> I was sitting and watching them in the middle. At the point, the French ambassador got angry when he noticed that these people want to, whether they want to set him up. He got angry and got up. He has his up. He has up. Leave me alone. I don't know what people are talking about. I have no business with what Samarepa is doing. Samarepa is a Finnish citizen. You people should go and look for a way to go and negotiate with him. He is fighting for the freedom of his people. This is what the French ambassador told these criminals from the Southeast. And they continue shouting, oh, we don't have access to him. We don't, he, 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 we don't know how to contact him. Uh, there is no access how to contact And the man tell, tell them, how is that my business? Look for how to contact Simon Epa. Engage him. That he has done nothing wrong. They will come to a Nigerian newspaper and talk rubbish. Thinking that me, me, you are going to intimidate me. You people don't know what is coming. I told you, the more you press this, Mazin and the Kano is giving this message. I am going to release a very powerful rebellion that have never been seen in freedom fighting. I will unleash it on you people. A very dangerous rebellion you have not seen anywhere. It is those who does not know their rights that you keep around. You see, illiteracy has dealt with the Biafra struggle for decades. People who studied in Nigeria or people who studied in, in India. Somebody like was I don't know whether he went to school in India or he just went there for a course. Who doesn't know their left and their right? We have refined professors refined doctors, refined nurses, refined academicians currently piloting the affair of the Biafra government in exile. I studied international law. In case you're not aware, I studied, I hold master degree in international law. I brought my experience and my profession to the Biafra struggle. So I stand to defend everything I'm doing anywhere, any day, any time. I know what I'm doing. And that's why when these people begin to mess, mess up, I look at them and I laugh. The more you try to blackmail me, the harder I come on you. So my people, it comes to the extent that the ambassador had to get angry. He stood up from his seat and he left. And I was watching them in the middle. I watched the meeting from the beginning to the end. So in case, because I know they have been asking, they have been wondering how Simon Epa is getting the information. How Simon Epa is knowing everything. I watch you people in the middle. It is not a secret. 
That is why what you don't know is better and bigger than you. There is no hiding place. Until Biafra come, I will be monitoring all of you in the mirror. So anytime you make any step, I have it in my, in my palm. And there is nothing you can do. No native doctor in this world will stop Biafra from coming. You know, sometimes I look at these people, I laugh. You don't know who you are fighting. You don't know who you are fighting. I don't need to remind you how many places you have visited in order to harm Simon Ekpa. Have any of them worked out? Have any of them worked out? The answer is no. The same way the criminal in your form was warned not to come to the oracle to do jam, jam against Simon Ekpa, otherwise he is going to die. He went and contracted somebody and the person got blind. Today, the person got blind. The man wanted to confess so that he can regain his sight. A job for kidnap him. Because you did not take my warning very, very seriously. You didn't take my warning very I said, before you attack me, go and ask an oracle in your village. I came to this struggle very prepared. Who puts on them man you are going to lose? You are going to, you are like, you already losing, but just to tell you that you will lose everything. You will lose everything at the end of the day. You have to stop going to ambassadors from the European country. They know what freedom is all about. You are bringing military to Biafra land to kill us. But in return, we are killing them. Making sure that nobody kill Biafra and go free. All those military that are coming to Biafra land to kill us, they are dying every day. And they will continue to die. We didn't look for them in Abuja. We did not look for them in their barracks. But very soon, we will begin to visit them in the barracks because, because they are sleeping and waking up from that barracks in Biafra land. That makes them and give them the impetus to come and kill our people and attack our villages. So, the best defense is attack. That is coming very soon. And we have confirmed the other day they came with aircraft, with fighter jet, we shot it down. The Biafra Liberation Army shot it down. And two, that week, last week ago, I made that announcement that it was an unconfirmed report and today we have confirmed that we shot that particular nonsense fighter jet down. And today, when they have failed with the French ambassador, they deployed another fighter jet to come and kill the Afrans. They know we are waiting for them. They came and hovered and they, because of fear, they flew back. Any day they come, our duty is to shoot it down. Any day they come to bombard Biafra territory, our duty is to make sure we shoot it down. And we're waiting for them, because we know that they're not going to stop. So Biafra people, we will continue to defeat the enemy, and like we said, our stand on solidarity with African nation is final. That is not going back. That is not going back. Any day, and I want to inform Biafra people today that we have initiated discussion with all the African countries involved. We are initiating discussion. And any day Nigeria intervene militarily against any of these nations that are liberating themselves, we are going to fight together against Nigeria. It is a fight for freedom. We will fight Nigeria from the east up to as long as we can to make sure Nigeria will have no place to hide until the freedom of Biafra. The only way we are not going to fight them is when Biafra has been declared a nation and they mind their business. That's why the popular saying in that they are enslaved 
ATT called Nigeria say, follow who no road. Follow who no road. Just within two years, not even two years, when did I, when did we start, you know, you know, to take charge of, of the affair of the Biafra liberation? Less than a year. Or let me say one and a half year now. Look at where we are. Look at what we've achieved. Just within one and a half year. Because we are not stupid and miscrant. We are not act out. We are not agbelos. We are people who are well grounded. And we know what we're doing. We know what we have come to do. And we know how to do it. So I just come in this evening to inform them that I watch them in the mirror and I see everything they do. So let them not think that anytime they gather, I'm not going to have knowledge about it. I'm going to watch them and I will describe, even if I want now, I will start describing how they were seated. For them to know that I watch them in TV. In TV. Iwana who was sitting like a like a hippopotamus in the zoo. Occupying all the seats there. One man. When they made the ambassador very uncomfortable, there were three white men there. When they made the ambassador very uncomfortable, the man was like, what is going on here? Do they want to plan coup against me? The man, hands up. when the man hands up, I was thinking that, uh, you know, they are... <laughs> They have uh, somebody pointed gun at him. <laughs> you must do this, you must do that. I was looking very well. I was. I didn't see anybody pointing gun. The man just hands up. Just Oibo man. Just hands up all of a sudden. That car, I can't stay here anymore. He stood up and that was how the meeting ended. He left. Shameless people. Shameless idiots. We are looking for how to bring Simon Ekpa down. Oibo man continued to tell you you can't do this guy anything. You can't do Simon Epa anything. He has not done anything wrong. Simon Epa is fighting for the freedom of people. Go and negotiate with him. You claim you don't know how to negotiate with Simon Epa. How am I going to negotiate with criminals? I can't negotiate with criminals. The negotiation is to release Mazen and what is What is too big about? What is the big deal about that? I want to inform them. The negotiation is Mazen and Bikano. And let me tell you. If you continue to use Mazen Namdekano's name in the name to fight Simon Ekpa, I will become a beast that will swallow all of you even quicker than you can ever imagine. The worst mistake you can do is to continue to use Mazen Namdekano's name to attack me. Because by the time the beast in me will come out, it will swallow everybody. All of you. So if you know something, just that particular place where you are going, by using Mazen and the name to attack me, it is going to backfire. And by the time it backfire, the kind of things you'll be seeing will be times 10 of what, is, of what you see now. Because the reason why I am taking this easy is because of the respect I have for Mazen and the and because he's still in the dungeon. But if you think that I'm going to use his name to attack me, believe me, what you are going to be seeing will be times 10 of what is happening now. Until Biafra is restored. I want to thank Biafra people for the seat at home today. The seat at home continues till Friday. Tomorrow, the seat at home continues. I want to appreciate the Biafra people who are making this sacrifice, making sure that our voice are heard. Nigeria government, Islamic state government, is confirming that indeed our voice is being heard. And the more they approach the Western Europeans to look for Simon Ekpa, the more they disgrace themselves. I was just watching and listening to the man. You know, our own mirror is not a, is not a Benue state mirror, it's not a Igala mirror. Our own mirror is not a de mirror. Our own mirror comes with voice. So you'll be hearing it, not just seeing it in the, you're <laughs> watching it like a, a muted uh, TV. I am hearing the voice too. When the man was shouting, when they said Simon Ekpa, the man was like, Simon Ekpa, 
Simon Epa, Simon Epa, Simon Epa. What, can, what, what does Simon Epa, what, what, what did he do? That boy is a problem. That boy is a problem. He is doing this. He is doing that. I was laughing at them. There is no evidence. You know, we explain tire. I welcome all of you. I say that this particular program this evening is going to be very interesting because it is not a usual space discussion. It is something to tell them that every place you go in the name of bringing someone up down, you are going to fail. And today, I have come to inform you that the French ambassador you invited to have a meeting with, you have also failed. And you are not going to learn that you can't do anything to Simon Epa. Simon Epa has become your end. Simon Epa has become the equation that you can never solve until therefore come. If you ignore this thing I'm saying, you will be regretting it at the end of the day. You will have yourself to blame. If you regret this thing I'm saying that Simon Epa has come to end all this criminality, you are, you are going to regret, you are going to blame yourself at the end of the day. If you ignore me, that you must listen to what we are saying for the interest of Biafra, you will have yourself to blame at the end of the day. The opportunity is still here. There is no way you are going to subdue me. Ha! They never burn you. You can never ever subdue me. And like I said, if you think that you are going to use my name, the kind of name, to attack me, to blackmail me, by the time I will turn against it, it is going to be very disastrous. I am telling you the fact. Because by then, I will not look anybody, not even Mazetan the in the prison. And then you are going to see hell. I welcome everybody to this particular space today. Sonny, the Minister of Information of Biafra Republic of Mendoza, and the good man, you are both co-hosts. Over to you. Thank you, Aguni Chamber One of Biafra Land, the Universal Ambassador of Peace, and the PM of the Indigenous People of Biafra, and the interim leader of this Biafran Liberation Movement. The enemies will continue to fight, but they will continue to fall. I told them that um, the all four of Biafra has been activated. And if you think that you are hidden, you're making a very great mistake. So thank you, my PM, for everything you're doing. Biafra people are with you. And our loyalty is intact. Thank you so much. It baffles us that um, people that are supposed to think of a way of stopping the carnage of the Fulani terrorism in Biafra land, are rather going to enable the terrorism to come down to Biafra land. In order for us to have babies and mothers massacred in thousands, like it happens on a daily basis in the north and in the middle belt. But this Biafran Republic government in exile has come to be their end, just like you are the finisher. Thank you for leading the pace. We welcome you to this space and to every Biafran. Please prepare your questions to our PM and be concise. Keep the accolades because we have a lot of work to do. When we achieve Biafra, you can give us the accolades. Uh, good man, say something before we start giving the microphone to the Biafran people. Yeah, I'm not going to take much time. I just want to say a very big thank you to our Prime Minister. Um, the love we have for you uh, is bigger than the size of our hearts. You know, like our PM said, we are solidly behind you. We are solidly behind you. This fight is fight to finish. Thank you so very much. We we are here with you. Hundred, a thousand percent. We are standing beside you to make sure we drive this restoration to its beautiful conclusion. Thank you for coming. Thank you. We love you. Go ahead, uh, my um, information minister. Take the mic. Okay, without wasting much of our time. Um, Mouthpiece of the gods of Biafra, you have the mic. Use your two cents. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm really good to be here. Odogu, Your Excellency, I don't have any question to, to ask. They don't know who they are fighting, as you said. I have told the gods of Biafra, 
and the Biafra angels to do what is needed. They don't have to wait for you to say it out because they know what is in your heart. All the people, especially the Igbo elites, that don't want our liberation will be swallowed. If these enemies of Biafra within are not swallowed, they will keep doing what they do. They have tried everything to stop you and Biafra, but they have failed woefully. Biafrans are following who they know. They know who Sabi rode. Your Excellency, you are leading us home to Biafra land, to the land of the rising sun. They don't know that you are the spiritual son, the golden child of the gods of Biafra. They know what to do if they don't release your spiritual father, Mazin Namdikan. They know they are supposed to release him before even coming to you to discuss anything. Anyone that is coming to you to discuss anything is just wasting the time without releasing our leader, Mazin Namdikan. So anyone that is saying any other thing, we don't listen to them, it is you. I thank you. Thank you again and thank everyone. God bless us all. Thank you very much. Thank you. And um, we'll be doing something different here. As you finish speak, we'll bring you down so that we can bring other people in because we have uh, numerous hands here. So starting from the speaker that just finished, I will take you down so that other people can come up. Thank you. And understand with us, please. Um, Ani, Ani, for freedom, unmute yourself and pick the mic, please. Hello, good evening, good evening my people. Uh, uh, good evening, my PM. Happy to speak with you today again. I'm very glad to be here. I greet everybody in the house. Uh, our information minister, but our greeting. <coughs> Uh, Simon Ikma, uh, our PM, I, I doubled your name. I have many names that I have given you. Even my children have given you a different name, but I am doubling your name tonight. I am adding it to Aquara. You know, I know that you understand what is Aquara. Because Aquara, they, Aquara, they, or they, they, they will do everything, but they can never cut the rope. Because that rope is linked to something that God himself is the one pioneering the project. So they can run from here to there. What you should know is that Biafrans are standing by your side. Biafrans, they know those that know the road, and you are one of them, okay? The reason why they made this move they made today is because of the the press statement you made, uh, press release you made today concerning our, you know, Western brothers that are raising up. So they thought, hence is issue that concerns France, a, you know, a little more bit. They thought that is an opportunity to them to now invite France into the case to say, look at this guy is supporting your enemies. But they don't know that these people, they have, they, they are more intelligent than them. They know the truth. Okay. But the question I want to ask, because I will not drop this thing without asking my question. Uh, these people, they are, they, are, they are taking us for granted. These Igbo politicians, they are taking us for granted. And these people are putting more, these people are consuming our energy every day. The energy we should use to fight our enemies. These people are trying to consume that en energy more than even our enemies. My question, my pre PM is this. When these people finish suffering us at the end of the road, what will be their condition? Because I don't think after all this suffering, after all this suffering, these people will just go scot free in the name of we, the Biafran people, are peacemaker. Because they're supposed to suffer for all these things that they are doing. So is a question I mean, that I'm trying to ask, I mean, to ask you. You, Thank ask, you, very and you don't need to answer. Allow them to answer. Don't ask and answer at the same time. Yes, uh, thank you very much. But we are not here to waste time about what we are going to do to those saboteurs and all that. We are now focused on getting our freedom. Everybody that sabotaged this freedom, the law of Biafra is awaiting them. And uh, the law will be designed to punish those who uh, are seen to have sabotaged this struggle 
especially when they are in a position to do something and they didn't do it. So the law of Biafra is going to be enacted. We're going to enact a law that is going to deal with them, just like in South Korea and all that. So it is not what I'm coming here to discuss today. Let us get our freedom first. Thank you. Thank you, PM. Um, Simon, if I in water, you have the mic, please. Thank you. Thank you so much, my brother. Thank you so much, our PM. I hope I'm coming out, our minister. I can hear you very well. Okay. Thank you so much, our own PM. It is a joy to be with you here today. I said earlier, I don't have any questions for you, but there's something I want to say that is very significant. You know why these people are still in the dark? Because they don't have spiritual eyes. Those people that have been deceiving them, telling them that this concussion that have been given to you will do this and that. One thing they have felt is, they kill innocent blood that is even placing a curse on them while they are dying. Where they are fighting to fortify themselves so that the people that are agitating will not hurt them. Or in extension, to use it to hold the people down, never to rise against them. But one thing they have not come to understand is that the man, Simon Eber, have been chosen from bed to do this job. And not only that, the innocent blood of the six million children that died, that was sacrificed at the altar of restoring of this nation, Biafra, is still speaking. And there's no any other sacrifice that you can make. There's no blood anywhere that will willingly come to you to offer it in order to protect yourself against what will come after you. This is what they have not understood. And that is why anytime they rise, they will fall. Because Elohim has chosen you, and not only that, he gives you support. Because once Elohim chooses somebody and gives that person support, it doesn't matter where you go. You can never defeat that person. And you can never bring that person down. The more you fight that person, the more you fail. Thank you, my PM. I don't have any question to ask you. Anywhere you lead, we will follow. Thank you so much. And may Elohim continue to bless you. He said. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you for using your two cents judiciously. Okay, we go to Mazi Simon Obo. You have the mic, please. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Um, salute to the general, my commander, Commander No Mercy Simon, my good sister. Um, I have a question, and my question is this you know, a lot of my friends and uh, followers on Twitter have been asking me this question where do they sign up to fight for Biafra? I said, We are already fighting. Just that whatever you are doing to bring Biafra, do it. But I've been meaning to really ask this question. My commander, please, where are we signing up? Because it reverse me a lot of things. We reverse boys, the para boys, this quick, the reverse, the sweet thing they happen. Just point us to anywhere we can sign up. Thank you very much. That is my question. Put your ear on the ground. Thank you, PM. Okay, we go to Simon Ekpa. It's Nam Dekano. You have the mic. Yeah, good evening, my PM. I salute you from here. I really appreciate your good work. You are really, really the new dimension our leader was talking about. Now, my question is, please, if finally we declare the uh, Biafra Republic, how are we going to know all these saboteurs? Because they are very, very much many. I think my own suggestion is we should submit all our social media platforms before counting 
on our database because we really need to deal with these people that sabotage us and suffered us for so long like this. We fully suffered in this struggle and we need to deal with them by recognizing them with full time. By everybody must submit his or her social media platform. That is my suggestion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just like I have said earlier, we are not uh, going to discuss what we are going to do to Sabos when Biafra come. But of course, this is a very good comment you made. This issue of social media is not what I'm going to address now because we are going to have a different way to identify them. Okay? Because social media, if you say somebody to submit social media, they will submit new social media and they will tell you they never had any social media. So, and you can't do anything when somebody tell you you don't have social media before. You can't do anything about it. So we have a way that we're going to identify them and we're not going to make it public. But let me tell you that number one, those who are in diaspora and we have not seen them in the list of those making payment for the Biafra liberation will be regarded as sabos. That is the biggest sabo. If you are residing in diaspora and we did not see your name contributing to the liberation of Biafra. That, that already is one of the best screenings so far from the people in diaspora. The people in the homeland, when we inaugurate the Biafra de facto government and they start functioning as they should, we are also going to divide the same means. So the first step is to identify those who financially contributed to the liberation of Biafra and those who, whose names are not in the list will fall into the category of sabots. And we are going to have a different treatment for them. And I want to remind all of you that uh, South Korea today, those who did not participate in fighting for their freedom in any way are not regarded as citizens. They apply for permit. They never got passport. And you can imagine how many years ago of South Korea freedom. Those who did not participate financially in their liberation are not regarded as citizens. They live like every foreigner. They give them permit to stay and they work and they pay tax. But those who participated in their freedom have their passport and their citizenship. So this is one of example that, that the Afra can take. But I want to tell you today that the contribution and the financial support coming from all of, uh, all over the world and coming from all uh, Biafrans from all over the world is one of the first prerequisite requirement to satisfy you as a Biafran. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. We move. We go to Dr. Ken. Dr. Ken. Dr. Ken, you have the mic, please. Two minutes. Dr. Ken, you're not reachable to your mic. Okay, we go to Simon and Patina. You have the mic. Two minutes. Why is everybody answering Simon and Patina? Okay. They must know that they must know that you, you have a powerful name. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for what is name is Simon Ekba in the whole world. <laughs> everyone now has Simon Ekba and that is adopted by the media. And everyone must be Simon and I was, because I was, I was I was I was surprised. I was surprised the way the French ambassador was calling the name today. Mr. Simon Ekpa, Simon Ekpa, Simon Ekpa, Simon Ekpa. <laughs> he hasn't done anything. Simon Ekpa, Simon Ekpa. He called the name more than 10 times. Simon Ekpa. He's a powerful name. Simon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tina. Tina, your time starts now. Two minutes, please. Hello. Hello, dear friends. Hello, my Prime Minister. Good day. God bless you now and always. I just have this question, it's been burning in my heart, and this might not be the right time to ask the question, but I have to, and you don't have to answer it if you don't feel like this is the right, right time to answer. I know that when Mazin Nankano, somebody had asked Mazin Nankano some time ago when he was with us, uh, that he would he become the Prime Minister of Biafra. 
And uh, just to paraphrase, I cannot say verbatim the word that he used, but I know that he said he would just step aside. And if Biafran people were, you know, gracious enough to build him a nice place for him to stay, he would just be there and just write and allow the Biafran people to, to take over. And uh, I, uh, my heart was broken when he said that. But uh, knowing that our leader has been through a lot, the man has suffered enough. And he needs the break if he asks for it. So, and I know now you're in the position and you are giving a lot. You've been through enough and a lot as well. But my question for you is, once, and I know Biafra is around the corner, because one day we are going to have to face this. My question is, once Biafra is liberated, would you continue to be our prime minister? I have elected you and I don't care. But because we are democratic, we are going to run a democratic system. My question would be, would you run to be the Prime Minister of Biafra? Because I want you to still be the leader and continue to be the leader of these people that are calling you self-acclaimed prime, prime Minister. I want you to be the, in charge of what they are going to do and who they, what, how, which part they are going to play in Biafra. And if you refuse and the Biafran people elect you, would you continue to do as we requested? That's my question. Thank you very much for that uh, beautiful and wonderful question. First of all, I am not Mazi Nandikano. Second of all, I have come to liberate Biafra people and to make sure that I participate in giving them a good life. Having said that, I am going to be part of Biafra government. Immediately yes. Biafra is restored the Biafra Republic government in exile will be dissolved. Every position will be dissolved. And we are going to go through the democratic process of electing leaders and all that. And I am going to be part of the Biafra government. I cannot allow idiots to come and start leading Biafra when we have suffered and we know exactly the kind of Biafra we want. And Biafra need me to deal with these criminals that will be coming from Nigeria. I know how to deal with them. Making sure that the relevant laws are enacted, making sure that we adopt different uh, uh, approach that we tackle this menace that will be coming from Nigeria. So you need me. I cannot fight for freedom and then abandon it to the rotten eggs and rotten criminals. So Hallelujah. No, it's, it's not going to be. It's not going to be possible. And the Mazenam Bikano, if he don't want to be part of it, is going to be on adva on adversary as an adversary role playing the adversary role to the Biafra government. So we are going to be participating actively, making sure that Biafra, the, 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 the structure and the foundation of Biafra is laid very strongly, that will carry us to 1,000 years to come. Thank you. Thank you, my PM. You answered my question 150%. I'm satisfied. Thank you. Well, <clears throat> thank you. Thank you, uh, Wanyama, for that question, and thank you, our uh, Prime Minister, for that beautiful, beautiful answer. Many of us would have expected that answer from you, because <laughs> we, will, we will want you around. You, you know the road. <clears throat> you know the road, and you need to lead the road so that we'll have a solid structure to run with. Thank you so very much. Evans, Evans, you have to take the mic. Evan Sumwafo, you are not there. We give you to Ganiru. We don't have time. Go ahead. If you are not there, the next Hello. person should take it up. Ganiru, go ahead. Hey, just uh, okay. Hello. Okay. My yeah, go ahead, Good evening from here. I'm talking from the land of the rising sun. I'm happy to be in the midst of great men. I salute you, our Prime Minister Simon Iba. I greet you, Mazi Sonia Abarawa. I greet you, good man. I greet you, Rumo Flex. I greet you, Rafael Ajese. I greet you, Wada Ngozi of the Biafran Republic government in exile. I greet you all in the name of our Lord. Um, I am very, very happy for the achievements so far 
which our Prime Minister and the Biafran government, um, Republic government in exile, have achieved so far, um, which is what have been keeping us to the place where we are today. Without somebody like Sam Mumba, all our hope could have lost. We thank God for bringing you in a time like this. There are a lot of questions in my mind, but first of all, I would like to reflect in what transpired during the um, protest against the um, the hand of the zoo in Enugu, who claim to be the zoo agent in the name of Peter Oyoshimba. Now, I thought that by now, that some people or group of people could have taken him to ICC, at least to test the breakdown of democratical deviants, which they claim that are practicing in Nigeria, in the zoological public called Nigeria. That is one of the questions, is that why is it that nobody could sue him for violating fundamental human rights of our people. That's number one. Number two is there are a lot of things I myself in particular was expecting that we could have gotten to be a build up internally to finish what our great men from the beginning have started because we have weapons that are greater than nuclear weapons which we have never used. Our tradition is more powerful than anything you can ever think. It is only those who understand what I'm saying that knows the stand of my speech this night. There are a lot of things that have happened in the past that we could have adopted as a mechanism to finish these criminals in our eastern region up without even shooting one gun. But I believe it is not something that I may speak here. Um, but one of it is the soldiers that have not been mentioned. The soldiers, like the one Mazin Namudkanan has already spoke in one of his broadcasts, says that their movement is like the speed of light. That if you video them, you are gone. These are the kind of things I thought that we could have put in place to finish every checking point the zoo have put in place. I will stop here. Thank you very much for the wonderful work you have done so far. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mazi Abra, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm waiting for PM to respond to him. No, no, there's nothing. I think this is just a general comment he was making, so I don't even ask any question. Okay, we move. All right, we go to Evans. Evans, one four, are you there? You're not there. Um, Simon, I'm by some. Come okay, bro. <laughs> Evans, are you there? Okay. Uh, I'm here. What I wanted to ask is just. Uh... Uh, what the previous person really asked, like, you know, uh, when the Afra comes, but, you know, our Prime Minister actually finished your answer. Because that always bothered me a lot. Like our, our, leader, our leader always said, when he, he got up the Afra, he would just go home and chill. He would show an example of how a leadership is valued. So, but for me, I say, I was like, what is the necessity after you suffer, you suffered by giving a freedom to your people and you allow them to bring the Nigerian mentality like our, our, our prime minister said. So, uh, the, the, the question was well, you know, questioned and the answer was really well uh, 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 addressed. Thank you, Thank Mr. Prime Minister. Thank you. Okay. Um, Simon and Solomon, Gabriel, you have the mic. Two cents. Use your two cents. Use your two cents. Well, well, well. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, my honourable Prime Minister. 
Good evening, Maze. Sunny. Good evening, good morning. Good evening, everyone. This is the second time I'm having this wonderful opportunity to speak directly to my world best and number one prime minister. As long as this earth is concerned, Maze Simon Eba. First of all, uh, I, I'm commending you and the entire government in exile for work and job well done. I'm speaking from the zoo anyway, and uh, I would like to let you on the know of one thing, my able prime minister. Emma Nibu, Omeri Luna Senebu, Oyebu Igu, Ka Ewu Nesu. That is the sum person that is with the goats feed. That is who the goats follows. In your own case, it's not just that you are the person with the feed. The kind of feed you are carrying coming back from the farm is one feed that both goat, sheep, cow, elephant, lion, tiger, all of them feed from the same feed. That's why all these uh, uh, criminals are also following up. They can't just do without you. While we are uh, following you, listening to you, adhering to your instructions and carrying out every directive that you are issuing out. They also, because they also need to feed, even in their criminality, they cannot just help the matters. They also need to follow up. But from the other angle, that's why they are all helpless and they keep, even as you are pursuing them, just like fly, house fly, following cow at the, from the back, even as they are, you are using tail to pursue, they are still coming. You are just a one man who fully zuru or run. Both the good, the bad, and the ugly cannot just do without you. Now, uh, without wasting much of my, the only question I have for you, my able prime minister, is from all indications and from the look of things, it is now crystal clear, even to the blind, that Gaffer is here. And I just saw an update today, a flyer bearing the date for the uh, proposed convention, uh, self-referendum convention, which you, you've enlightened us on before now. I saw a date, 20, 21st of October. And now we, from the homeland, especially from the remote areas where I happen to come from, we don't have uh, most informations or our people don't get some of these informations and I don't know how is the planning going on or how is it going to happen down here because why that will be happening around October in Finland I know the way the government is moving with the speed of light I know things like that will also be going on and most people might not have the information how are we going to carry it along people from the homeland based on that convention or is our own convention going to be on a separate date because people like me I would love to participate if wishes were horses I would have flown to Finland and be part of that convention and still be part of the homeland so how are we going to be carried along on this matter because I know we have few months to the end of the year, and I know Biafra will come before then, which means all these things will happen. So how are we going to be part? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That is a, 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 a question. I don't know who. I don't know who. Is, uh, who is, can everybody uh, mute, please? Can everybody mute, please? Hello. Hello. Please, when you ask a question, you mute your mic. I've muted them. You can go on, sir. No, some... Th okay. All right. So, there is, a, you know, some kind of, from your, from your statement, I think there is some kind of misconception about the whole thing. What is happening in October is not a referendum for Biafra. What is happening is the convention for the Biafra self-referendum. And I know I have had some comment, somebody making comments somewhere about 
the referendum of uh, Biafra referendum in Finland. It is not a referendum of Biafra in Finland. It is called the Biafra Self-Referendum Convention. This convention is a place or is a gathering of Biafrans all over the world where we are going to go thoroughly through the processes of the Biafra Self-Referendum. How the referendum will be organized, we are going to have professionals that will come to talk to Biafra people from Finland and beyond. We're going to have dignitaries that will attend this convention to lecture Biafra people and we go through different kind of uh, you know lectures and there is going to be there is going to be speeches from different dignitaries concerning the referendum of Biafra and self-referendum as the case may be. So it is a place where you are going to learn the process, the procedures, what and what need to be done, how it should be done, and all that. And it's going to be two days convention. So for those thinking that we are going to have a referendum in Finland, it is not a referendum, but it's a preparation for the referendum, and it is an avenue, an opportunity to get to know the process, what should be done, what we're going to do, how we're going to do it. And we're going to have session by session from the one to the two, and then after the two, everybody will be going back. And then you know something about how the Afro referendum is going to take place. This is what we are going to do in Finland. And in this particular convention, it is the first ever convention. And we are, we are expecting that it is going to be a great one. So it is only by accreditation, which costs money. So anybody coming to this referendum, to this convention, is going to pay a registration fee of about $150. And the link to this particular convention will be open very soon. So the cost of the re registration is about $150. And there is also registration for VIP. So it is not a, it is a government, pro a government project. It is not just a, a group or organization or what you see in IPOB. No, this is government. It's convention. You know what convention is all about. So you are going to come with a tag. We are going to verify your identity. You are going to come. There are going to be heavy security. And it is just government of Biafra having its convention in Finland. That's what it is. So we are not here to, we are not coming to do uh, a, ref a referendum. The referendum will be conducted and every Biafra all over the world will be given opportunity to participate. We are working on that. Uh, you know, we are working on that particular one. It's going to cost money, but we are working on it. So thank you very much. Thank you, PM. We go to uh, Mba Biafra. Mba Biafra, you have the mic. Use your two cents. Mba Biafra, you're not ready? Okay, we go to Simon. No, 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 no. It, 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 they all were they all were muted, so we just unmuted them. Okay, Mbah Biafra, pick the mic. Make use of your two minutes. Mbah Biafra, are you there? You are not ready. Okay, we go to Simon Ekba. Uh, Simon Ekba, realistic sense. Unmute yourself. You have your two minutes. Yes, uh, good evening, dear friends. Good evening, my PM. I greet you. This is my first time of speaking to you, even though we have been seeing him spiritually. I greet you for the great work we are doing. I don't have questions to ask you. I just want to appreciate you. You are the quagmire that the zoo will be sunk in. You are the hand of God. I just want to praise you, my PM. Anybody who doesn't listen to you, I don't know what the person will gain. My PM, continue with the fire in you. The whole world is seeing it, and we, my, I myself, is seeing it. I'm seeing it even beyond. Continue your good work. Elohim is with you. Chupo Kabiyama will continue to strengthen you. No evil fashion against you will see the light of the day. Thank you very much. I greet you, dear friends. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. Are you the one who spoke? Wagamaya one time when they were displaying the people and planning <laughs> attacks. <laughs> yes, 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 my PM. Yes. Are you the one? 
Yes. Are you serious? <laughs> it's not the one. That was the full animal that was speaking the No, no, man. it was not. No, it was not for animal. It's a Biafra now. Who spoke? Uh, who spoke on uh, on TV like that one time like that saying that there were no Pagmaya. We don't have any Pagmaya with you. <laughs> it's not the one. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. We go to the next person. Okay, um, the God of Thunder. The God of Thunder. The God of Thunder. The God of Thunder. Can I pick the mic and make use of your two minutes? You're not close to the mic. Okay, we give it to. Mba Biafra. Mba Biafra, unmute yourself. Use your two minutes. Uh, good evening, my Prime Minister. Good evening. Hello, can you, can you hear me? Very well, go on. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, okay. Thank you, my Prime Minister. Uh, I want to thank everybody, every officials, top officials in Biafra government in Ezai. I'm calling from, uh, I'm calling from the zoo. But I just want to bring some report. Sometimes Hope Zodima hosted some vigilantes uh, and some uh, uh, at a uh, space. I don't know the reason why he hosted them. So, but I have tried to get the information, but the person denied and uh, continue not to let me know the main information. And the reason why they are gathered in, uh, in the state uh, government house. So well, uh, I am aware. Of, I am aware. There is no point going for that. I am aware of that, and they know they are collecting it water, water. They are collecting okay. it water, water. I am aware of everything that is happening there. I am aware of who is coming. I will. I am aware of who is going out. So don't worry about okay. that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. May God to you, sir. We are. We are solidarity behind you. We thank love you, you, sir. Thank you, Mba. Thank you, Mba. Thank you. And let your Mba not turn to Oluwale Mba. Okay. Um, ben Chooks. Ben Chooks, you have the mic. Make use of your two minutes, please. Yeah, good, good evening, people. Good evening, my PM. Uh, yeah, I quickly, one. As you made mention of the referendum, uh, is it going to be a secret ballot or just a a normal, uh, uh, traditional uh, referendum, as the uh, OEM mentioned. And secondly, again, you know Nigeria, they have played all their games. All their cards is finished on the table. If they come through your president now to reach you, what are you going to do? Thank you. If they come to my president, that is Biafra independent. <laughs> Okay. The referendum, is it going to be secret ballot or we stay on the line? Have, we are going to have both. It's going to be both secret, open, and electronic voting. Thank you, PM. PM, okay, please, thank next you. Time. PM please, next time, add the spiritual also so that... Uh, they were in my because they love our people love spiritual things. <laughs> okay, we go to Simon by David Nana. Simon by David Nana, pick the mic, please. Use your two minutes. Okay, thank you so much, my able Prime Minister. I really appreciate you. My Prime Minister, my question goes like this. You know, in one of um, William Shakespeare's novel, The Macbeth, the weary sisters deceived Macbeth by telling Macbeth that no man born of a woman can be able to harm him. And Macbeth started believing in that prophecy and was acting as if he's invisible and there's nobody can bring him down. 
Unfortunately, at the end, Margaret later discovered that Banco was born through caesarean operation. Don't you think it is necessary now because at the earlier stage when we were making some expositions, most of the governors who are fighting you today don't actually know how you were born. Is it not proper for you to remind them that you are a special child, that when you are born, your parents even put a four on your neck so that before they go, just like you told them, before they fight, you let them go to the gods and consult. Is it not necessary you remind them of how you came into life so that they will not be scared of even fighting you? That's my question. Thank you. It will remain a mystery. I am not going to tell them how I was born. It will remain a mystery to them. It's part of the game. That particular part of me is what they will never know. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Who is next to go? <coughs> uh, who is next to go is um, Simon Ekba Matumwa. Simon Ekba Matumwa, grab the mic. Use your two cents. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, my able uh, information minister. Thank you. Good evening, uh, some, uh, our PM, sir. Good evening, sir. Thank you, everybody here. This is the first time I was speaking with you, my PM, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much for even existing at the first place. Thank you, sir. I don't have much to say. I don't, I don't, I don't even have questions to ask. The, the way you are driving us, we love it. Keep on. Thank you. Make sure that your fuel doesn't finish yourself. I will drive you very well. Always up for the side. Yes. Please, which yes. kind of fuel do you use? Is it fuel or the. <laughs> I, use, I, use, I use all of them. I use all of them. I use okay. a pop, a pop <laughs> okay, it's good. It's good for them to know so that they can reinforce yes. the power of the offer. Okay, yes. much more. Thank you. We go to the next speaker. Um, MNK, MNK, ESN, Father, and so on. Pick the mic, please. Use your two minutes. Thank you, thank you, my big brother and my minister Aparawa and my able PM. I greet you, sir. This is the second time I am coming to talk to you and I'll ask you a question. First or foremost, I will give you one name here and now, and that name is Anebe One of the whole world. Anybody that knows what Anebe means will know that you are more than Anebe. Then what I want to ask is this, my PM, please. I don't know. It has been a long time I want to ask this question, but... Mike was not given to me. and uh, well, let, me, let, me, let me ask you one question before you continue. All right, sir. Have you ever seen, have you ever seen an Anebe? <laughs> no. That's what I saw you, How can you call me one you have not seen? <laughs> Because I know that people that are looking for you can never see you. <laughs> That's what I'm asking you now. So have you ever seen an Ebe? I have not seen an Ebe, but I know that the people that are looking for you will not see you. Okay, so can you, can you explain an Ebe for those who don't know what it is? Okay, an Ebe is a tree that's no perfect on That what? Perfect on it will dry up. Uh, can you say it again? A neighbor is a tree, is a tree that when a bed pecks on it, the tree, the bed will dry up. And I ask you, have you seen an neighbor? No. <laughs> but my dad. <laughs> you see, my dear, my let, dad. Let, me tell, let, let me tell you, let me tell you one thing. Uh, let me tell you. It is like when you go to a native doctor, they will tell you to break the shit of uh, a gamma lizard. <laughs> <laughs> Out of bring the the teeth of uh, of EGG. It, it fly. 
you go and bring teeth. When you know the teeth, when you know that fly doesn't have teeth, they will tell mm. you to go and bring the teeth. You will need one teeth of a uh, fly, one uh, one eye of uh, uh, another animal that doesn't even eye, have eyes. <laughs> and then, I tell you, you need the, you need the Borogo of Anunese. You know this, I don't know, does it exist? <laughs> or they just want to tell you, they just want to tell you something that you can never get. You just bring the money and then they go to the market and look for Anunese. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that is just a joke. Alright, go ahead. Yeah, my question is this, my BPM. There are... I have this in heart. One our leader was there with us. Somebody asked him a question. What would he do about our people that are in so many prisons, both in Europe and Africa? And our leader said that we will go and get our people when the time comes. So I'm asking you the same question. What are we going to do about our people that are in so many prisons in the whole world? Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. First of all, I want you to understand that anybody in any prison in the world have committed one crime or another against that country. That's number one. So we must have that at the back of our mind. Most of them are as a result of what Nigeria have done to their life. They went into crime. So we are going to, first of all, make sure we provide legal representation. We're going to give them legal aid making sure they have access to legal representation in those countries, at least to have access to fair justice. Then after that, they are going to come back. And when they come back, we we'll put them to a rehabilitation camp where they are going to be rehabilitated, making sure we take them, take care, sure they are stable mentally, rehabilitate them because of uh, what they have, may have gone through in the process of serving prison in different countries. So anybody that is coming to Biafra land as a as a, a convict as a convict will go straight to a rehabilitation camp where we are going to make sure that we have opportunity and possibility for a better life. Then after that, we will know what the person has to do when he comes to Biafra land. The job government will work with the social service to provide job for the person so he can be integrated back to the system of Biafra without any hassle. This is what we're going to do for them. We're not going to go to any country and uh, and uh, and uh, change the law of those countries. Okay, but we're going to, you know, invoke our diplomatic, uh, uh, you know, uh, our, our diplomatic, uh, uh, whatever agreement we're going to have with those countries and make sure that we have effective uh, diplomatic approach to we are going to design a well uh, uh, a well detailed diplomatic uh, approach what we're going to use to approach different countries based on the kind of uh, agreement we're going to have with them and treaties we're going to sign so we'll make sure that we identify this uh, uh, opportunity and possibility and then go with them, discuss with them and Make sure they understand that uh, when these people serve their sentences and they want to bring them back to Africa, we are going to be part of that movement. To make sure that we give them sense of belonging and they should understand that they are no longer going back to Nigeria. That there is a new nation which have come to take the primary responsibility of this nation is to treat everybody equally and give justice to Biafra and the citizens of Biafra. So we're going to love them, we're going to show them love that Nigeria never showed them. Because most of them are bri brilliant people and they have bright future, but because of the system of Nigeria, they went into crime. That is not an excuse to go into crime anyway. But we know that not everybody can take it and remain civil and, and without crime. So we are going to make sure that we work closely with different countries that Biafrans are serving in their prisons and follow the law of those lands. But then, once they are released, we'll have a designed, um, uh, a designed system that is just specifically for people who have served in prison, so that they will become productive in their, in their uh, government. Thank you. Thank you, PM. I think um, uh, Master Prophet will 
also be part of those people taking care of the brains of people that have been damaged because his brain was damaged and then he was able to uh, get his brain back to normal at some point. <laughs> so, uh, King Efyong, King Efyong, you have the mic. Your two minutes, please. King Efyong, you have the mic. Your two minutes. Thank you. Thank you so much. I greet all the others. I greet our PMO. Boss, I greet you, sir. My, I don't have, I don't have any questions to ask him. I just want to thank him for what he has done for us. I want to appreciate his good work because we feel, we feel the, um, the work that he has done here. We are, we are in the zoo. We see what is going on. So I'm, I'm very, very happy to, to hear his voice this night. I say thank you, sir. May God bless you. Bless you too. Thank you, Ifyo. Okay, we give the mic to God of Thunder. Are you ready now? God of Thunder, Gaddafi, take the mic, two minutes. Thank you. Thank you, our PM. Thank you. Uh, you know, the coming of our who peace. Is, who, who is leaking my inter? Now this one, wait there, you. This one, this one. <laughs> <laughs> this, this God of Thunder, Naimo. <laughs> <laughs> my dear, thank you. You know, you are Master Daddy Kano says, son, we two are your own son. So you can know now. <laughs> thank you. My, our PM, I want to remind you what uh, the, our internal leader said, the general himself, Ujuku. There was a function they called him to come and pray. He picked up the mic and said, God, give us mad people that will handle our affairs. So, and uh, you are coming, it seems, is the answer to that prayer that Ojuku prayed. Because you need people that are stubborn. Uh, in fact, um, the originator of rugidity to handle the affairs of Biafra. Because as Nigeria does not have sense, somebody needs to compare them to go to black market to purchase sense. That is the thing you are doing, sir. Two, um, the question I want to ask, sir. You know, in this uh, zoo, they have a law, though it is not effective in Nigeria. This uh, ex-convict law. Um, it's supposed to be that any ex-convict are not supposed to hold public office. That same kind of law. Will they have a place in Biafra, sir? Thank you. That's just one question I have. God bless you, sir. Yes, it is going to have a place in Biafra. But remember that Biafra is still a new nation. So we are not going to backdate those people that were wrongly convicted or that were convicted because of what they have done and uh, we did because of the Nigeria influence and all that. So we are not going to backdate that. Biafra becoming a new nation who will start from scratch. So if you commit crime within Biafra land and, in Biafra, or, and you are convicted under Biafra law or any other law in the world, it may affect the possibility for you to serve in public office. It is not automatic, but issues, these cases will be reviewed in individual basis. And of course, the Biafra law will be able to sort out that particular issue. It's not something Simon Epa is going to say here, but it's just opinion that I feel that could, could protect the interests of Biafra is to uh, assess those convictions in the individual basis. Crime is crime. And there are crimes that are more grave than the other. So those crimes uh, and those convictions will be treated on individual basis. Of course, it is not uh, just, just like in Finland here, if you are convicted, uh, you know, in certain crimes, of course, you can't serve in any public office like that. Uh, so uh, it is something that we are going to adopt in the Afro land. Thank you. Thank you. Pierre. Thank we, you. We go to Simon Ekba MNK Onyeka. Simon Ekba MNK Onyeka, grab the mic two minutes. Thank you, um, 
uh, all protocol of that, uh, my PM uh, loyalty is watertight. Thank you. Um, my question is this: uh, um, As you all know, um, today in the zoo, many people don't know that lack of electricity is a deliberate attempt, and we have seen how they have frustrated all the talent, uh, scientific talent innov uh, innovation, only only uh, um, prank comedy movie is in Nigeria. When you look at the nation, you see a um, uh, 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 new innovation, uh, uh, IT new innovation, but only in Nigeria you see only prank and comedy, nothing. They don't encourage uh, uh, science talents. So uh, my, um, my PM, my question is this, um, is there any hope, anything to do to give the people hope, those who are talented, because in my family, I know in Biafra land, every family have uh, a born talent, a born engineer. So anything to do to give them hope. Because some people may think, want to invest something now, maybe you will take the person like 10 years, you say, no, I can't waste my time. After, after the, at, at the end of nine, I will be frustrated. The person will just abandon it to another thing. So is there anything to, any, any uh, 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 platform to give these people for them to have hope, to continue uh, inventing something they have in mind? Thank you. You just said the problem, and also you said the solution. So what else are we going to do other than providing electricity and bringing it, making the them to have energy so they can develop their talent and their innovation, innovative talent, and start uh, you know uh, uh, using it, uh, utilizing it to develop their talent and themselves. Of course, the Afra government is going to invest usually on innovation. And those who have talent to build something will be supported usually by the Biafra government through the labor office. So we're going to have what is concerned. So anybody that has talent, it is time. Because like you, see, like you know today, all of us that are in diaspora doing well have never and will never attain our potential. No matter how you, no matter which level you are, anywhere you are in the world today, you can never attain your potential there. But down in the Afro land, the Afro government will give you the leverage. You know, you're going to leverage on the government uh, policy to attain to your potential in anything you know how to do best. So we are going to have that particular system that will support innovation and support talent in the Afro land. And let me tell you. The issue of this uh, comedy you see them doing, you know, it just, uh, that's all they do. They, they make them forget how to think, make them forget how to everybody just listen to somebody laugh and then everything goes like that. And then when you, when you want to talk about freedom, they tell you to hell because they don't know what freedom is all about. So that's what we are changing with this, our awareness we are making today. That's why many millions of their friends are sitting at home because we have liberated their mind. Even though they come with the propaganda of the people are afraid, people are scared, it's all lies. Those propaganda no longer sell. And you see that they are fading away. It's no longer people are scared. It is now Simon Ekba is using it as home to make money. This is the kind of, uh, you know, statement that comes from somebody who calls himself a leader. People that doesn't have brain. That it doesn't make any logic. That Simon Ekba is using it at home to make money. As if Simon Ekba is collecting tax when people sit at home. As if Simon Ekba is asking people to pay millions of naira when people are sitting at home. So I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know the kind of sense they are trying to make. But that is the average Nigeria, you see. The people that are leading you to the hellfire. Like Iberi Ibe. Naya Baribe. And you know that we have given him a name. All of you here listening today, we have given Abaribe a new name. His name is Iberibe, Abaribe. Because that is the definition of what he said, Iberibe. Oh. That Samanakpa is using it as to make money. Can he you know, expatiate it and explain how, what he meant by that? So his name is Iberibe, Abaribe. And I'm calling on dear friends, anywhere you see Abaribe saying anything and you want to make comment, address him as Iberibe, Abaribe. From tonight, thank you. Thank you, my promise. Uh, any Naya, very
All right. Um, Info Minister, are you still okay. there? And, uh, please, and please, have uh, five minutes. Okay. Thank you, PM. Um, I see the uh, pam pam pam. Pick the mic and use your. <laughs> In fact, now that PM has five minutes, we have to reduce our minute to one one so that we can have five people. So, pam pam, you have the mic. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> My able Prime Minister, I appreciate and honor you, sir. You are indeed the savior of our time, honestly. And I want to quickly make this, um, you know, observation. These uh, Southeast criminal governors, they should begin to look for where they will hide because, you know, they are meeting the French ambassador because they saw that you addressed the world in your military regalia. And they should understand that you are a more formidable military, military personnel a more formidable uh, general, even than the ones uh, that they are scared of. By already, French cannot control the military force in, uh, in uh, uh, Niger that, have, that is hosting the uh, French uh, presence. Neither could they stop uh, Burkina Faso, and they dared not stop uh, the other countries that are, you know, wearing their heads to chase them out, and uh, they cannot even there stop a more formidable general. They are afraid because when they see that military force, they say, ah, France, come and see another person in uh, Samonekma. He's coming to talk another. Let me tell them, please go and look for where you will hide now. Because already Mars Samonekma, the prime minister, he is even more popular than any one of you in that Zoological Republic, all of you. If you want to tell us, let's make a, a, a challenge. Mars Samonekma will only make a virtual appearance in any of the biggest, biggest stadiums in Biafra Island. Any of the biggest stadiums. Only a virtual appearance. There will be an overflow. And nobody will collect a penny. There will be an overflow of people that will gather in Biafra Island to listen to our Prime Minister. But you, make an invitation in the smallest stadium without paying a dime. And let's see if anybody will listen to you. We already have a leader in Biafra land right now. We already have the one that will speak the mind of the people that is speaking instead of Martin and the Kabu, who you have heard. And the only man that can stop you from doing any harm to him is this man here, our Prime Minister. And if you want to dare and continue to stay there without looking for a hiding place, I'm sorry for you. What will happen to you will be worse than what happened to the people that are already on their heels right now, right away from Burkina Faso and the Nigeria Republic. Thank you, my Prime Minister. I take my bow in honor and we appreciate you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you, Van Van Van. Uh, next one minute goes to Simon Epa Fongel. Grab the mic. One minute, one minute. Fongel, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, my PM. I appreciate everything you're doing. All, everybody, all protocol observed. Uh, so I just wanted to ask real quick. Um, so what about, somebody actually asked me this. What about those people that probably gave some um, donations during the Mazi, when um, uh, Mazi was leading and, you know, after the whole thing and, we don't know where some of the funds happen. And let's say we get Biafra now. And if they can prove that they participated, then are they allowed to be? What, what, what is going to happen with those people who's, who say that they contributed before, but now they're very afraid to do so now? Just that's it. Thank you so much for all you do. We appreciate you. Thank you, <clears throat> Thank you very much. Of course, anybody that has contributed before, is also regarded as Biafra, but why are you afraid? Now, what is it that we are doing now that is different from what Mazin and have done? So why should they be afraid of contributing now? So there is a comma there. But however, whoever that has contributed before has also participated in making us what we are today. And we cannot forget them. Thank you. Thank you, Pierre. Um, Biafra and Sid, use your one minute judiciously because there's a flight waiting to pick our PM now. Dear friends, Thank you very much. Thank you very much for giving me the mic. My PM, I greet you, sir. Thank you very much. Holy, 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 Simon Epanjoku, 
is another savior, another savior. Holy, holy, holy someone never. Can we change? Can we change? You can sing that thing when we have left your brand. Thanks. Sir, you, you are. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, a savior to me is a savior to me. No matter what any other person will say, that is who you are to me. Somebody that is bringing me out of uh, slavery is my savior. So I have seen the good work you have done, and uh, it is good that I appreciate it. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, please, uh, my prime minister, you are. You know, you are doing a very good job, giving our enemies heavy, heavy knock on their head. The knock you are giving them, I am so happy. Continue giving them harder. Hit them harder. You are the one that fits them more. You fit them more than we can ever imagine. Continue giving them this heavy knock you are giving them. Please, I want to use this opportunity to remind you, my Prime Minister, that our meeting is on the 16th. Please, sir, you should uh, try and remember to make it a date like you did for us in the past one. Please, 16th of this very month of uh, August. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. What it all Thank you, respond, man. Thank you, Nande, baby. Thank you, sir. Amen. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. My PM. <laughs> okay. okay. We move. We go to uh, Simon Ekpa Christopher Okemwa. You are second to the last person. This is your yeah, minute. Uh, one you. minute. One minute. One minute. Fire yeah, on. but Ma, can, can you hear me? Yes, go on, please. Yeah, first and foremost, I want to acknowledge uh, great leader, Mazin Andukano. You know, I wish him good health, mental, physical. I acknowledge you, Mazin Samonepa. You're a great man, the Prime Minister. I'm not going to say too much, but you know we appreciate you. We appreciate you more than you think, more than you can imagine. The people uh, here, I acknowledge everybody, Mazin Barawa, Mazi Goodman, and my fellow comrades. I also want to recognize the spies, people from the DSS, CIA, all of you here. I'm sure you all can also see that Biafra is here to stay. Biafra is a reality. We are going home, regardless of what you would do. So the earlier you know this, the better for us all. The Finnish government and the Finnish people would even benefit further after we get Biafra, because some of us have seen the future whereby people will want to know where, where is this city called Laeti? People will try to see where this started. So, Madis and Monepa, um, two things. First, I want to request that you kindly, the date for the, uh, what is it called, the conference or the um, referendum, you know, the conference or the forum, uh, yeah. Please, if you can make the dates available beforehand so people who want to make reservations, accommodations, buy tickets early will be able to do that. The second thing, you have a popular saying, and I quote you, I know the day Biafra would come. So my question to you tonight is, does that still stand? Thank you. I get my mic here. Thank you very much. I know the date Biafra will come. It stand yesterday, tomorrow, today, and the day Jeffra will be declared and defended. Thank you. And I just I, posted, I, will, I will sleep well tonight. Yes, and I just posted I just posted uh, the uh, first information about the date of the convention. It's going to be on the twentieth and twenty first of October two thousand and twenty three and the venue and the information I have just posted, the link to the registration will be open very soon. Thank you. I'm sorry to, to, to interrupt. One more thing, Mazi Simoneba. This date, is it 100% confirmed? Are we 100% certain about this, this date? date? Thank this you. Date, this date, we are 100% certain. Thank you so much, sir. God bless you, my PM. God bless you. Um, Simon Ekbao Zuchuko, you are the last person to take the mic, please. Thank you, Zuma Woman. Thank you, thank you, Mazi. Uh, Sonia Barawa, the Minister of Information, I greet you.
and I doff my cap for my honorable prime minister Mukege Jemba Odogu Karodogu. I'm grateful to be here again. I spoke yesterday. I also grateful to be here again today. Thank you, my prime minister. I have no much question. I don't even have any. Um, I bring greetings from is from the small London number one. I bring greetings from all my families, saying to you, Iwo Dogu, Jiden Kiji, carry on. Let the fire continue. Let this dragon continue spilling out the, the fire and the blood. Let them go together. Let all our enemies go down. Thank you so much. Carry on. I greet you, Mazi. Ndewo. Thank you very much. And we hereby bring this particular session to an end today <clears throat> and we are encouraging you to join us tomorrow again on space as we are going to be live tomorrow remember that the seat at home continues and the enemy will continue to cry thank you all over a thousand we have over almost a hundred requests and we have over a thousand five hundred listening live and direct on our space today see you tomorrow remember that we are having uh, the first Biafra government in exile fundraising this coming Saturday, very important. And the Biafra first ever convention on self-referendum will be held in Finland in October 20th and 21st, 2023. Start making your preparation. The registration fee is $150 or so uh, for the two days. And when the link for the registration is out, you are going to uh, have those link, and then you can visit the link and see what other services you would like to choose. Mm -hmm. We are expecting at least 1,000 participants from all over the world. 1,000 Biafrans from all over the world will be in Finland. Thank you very much. And I thank you all, the co-hosts, Minister Sonny. Thank you very much, good man for your job this evening. I want to see you again tomorrow. May God bless all of you. From here, from me, it's good night.